Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of God, dear saints of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not a saint, Brad. Well, if you're not a saint, then you ain't saved. Oh, Catholicism, Satan's church. You know, you think being a saint is one thing, but according to scripture, especially for us today, a saint is a saved individual. Okay? Be aware of that. Today, brethren, um, got lots of lots of videos to do but today got to address something about deception today now you and i have talked about what is called dragon speak in the scriptures in the book of revelation um it clearly you know that the um the false prophet or the uh the beast or whatever i think it's a false prophet said that he spake like a dragon a dragon does not speak in clamorous volume or ah! but a dragon speaks smoothly softly with reserve until uh, until you step on one of their little toes okay some of these uh, Jesuit coadjutors are not that good as they think they are at composing themselves unless they come across someone who they really don't like <laughs> yeah, but then again, there are some out there who are very good at composing themselves. I know of several of them who um, are very, very, very good at composing themselves as to uh, dot their I's and cross their T's to give nothing away that they aren't of us or that they work for the Vatican. Okay, and um, we have to remember something about our adversary, dear brethren, people. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, commonly referred to as the King James Version. And please follow me along, word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Please follow me along. Check me out. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Check me out. Make sure I'm not lying to you. If we come, apart, uh, come across a portion of scripture that you are questioning about context, pause the video and be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so, and check the context on your own time, okay? All right, and also to follow me along because sometimes this, my mouth, will go quicker than my brain, okay? And there are those very smooth coadjutors out there who know that of me personally, and they will use that to their advantage. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. So, turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Genesis chapter 3. Brethren, Church of the Living God, uh, for me to write the same thing on to you is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Got to remember these things, brethren. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on verse 5. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. The serpent, that old serpent, the devil, Satan. Okay? Satan. This is Satan. Satan was in the Garden of Eden. Okay? In Ezekiel chapter 28, you see a reference onto thou hast been in the Garden of Eden. Okay? And the heretics would like to change that, well, uh, Tyrus was where the Garden of Eden might have been at one time. No, Ezekiel chapter 28, the Lord is addressing Satan, okay, to Tyrus, okay, Tyrus, uh, whom Satan was controlling at that time, okay, but subtle, smooth, slicker than snot, 
smooth, very smooth. See, one who is going to infiltrate and there to cause trouble and division amongst brethren is someone who's going to be so smooth, so smooth, and talk with a demeanor that doesn't put any offense, but their hatred is hidden with lying lips. But the serpent was more subtle. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, hmm, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Question what God has said. Okay. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it. That he said, Don't eat the fruit in the midst of the garden. Okay? Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. God did not say that you shouldn't touch it. Don't eat it. Okay? All right? Eve, because of whatever factor, intimidation, whatever, she spake unadvisedly with her lips. We also see uh, that which is in Satan's ministers of righteousness, who will use subtlety, who will use a false demeanor of civility, of a tone of voice, vocal inflection even, to let down your defenses, and then they come in with all these onslaught attacks of character and accusation, while all the while smiling, trying to be civil. But see, even them, even them will drop their civility when you ain't buying it. When you ain't buying it. Yeah, yeah. But, verse 4, and the serpent said unto the woman, <laughs> Ye shall not surely die. Oh no, God doesn't know what he's talking about. Verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You will be your own God, meaning that you are sufficient in and of yourself to judge what is right and what, what is good and what is evil. Okay? And, uh, hey, cousin, you, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, the longer you live, the quicker you ought to learn that you are incapable of actually judging what is good and what is evil. Okay? All right? There are some things that are painfully obvious. But then again, nowadays, good is evil and evil is good. Sodomy, for example, is evil. But today... Especially in these pleh, Christian, and I am not a Christian. Thank you very little. I am not a Christian, okay? I'm of the Church of God, Church of the Living God. I'm a saint. Oh, Brad, that's, oh, shush. Okay, see, this is what Satan has done through Catholicism. The minute you hear saint, what do you think of? Someone who is sinlessly perfect, or someone who is glorified by Mother Church, don't you? And see, a lot of us, even of the Church of the Living God, when you talk about, well, we're saints, right away, your flesh has reservation. Why? Because of what Satan has done. You're saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God. Church of God, guess what? You are a saint. Yes, Zena, thank you. My dog, my alarm going off. They're doing things up back. But yes, you're saved, you're a saint. Okay, you are a saint. And the enemies will call that, oh, you're being arrogant. No, no, that's what... We refer to ourselves as saints. Oh, Paul referred to us as saints. Called to be saints, okay? All right, just so you know. But see, this deception. Satan didn't come in with thunder clapping and uh, guns of roaring and a blazing. No, he came in in subtlety. Turn now in your authorized version of the scriptures to 1 Kings chapter 19. 
First Kings chapter 19. I, I, I beg your pardon, dear brethren. I beg your pardon. Please forgive me for uh, addressing this thing right here. Forgive me of this. April 28th, 2008, is when the Lord saved me, the sinner who was chief. He saved me and sealed me until the, until the day of redemption. He sealed me with himself. Fifteen years ago. That ain't nothing to our Lord. A thousand years is a day, and a day is a thousand years to our Lord. Our Lord, our Father, Jesus Christ, lives outside of our time. He is not constrained by our time. Okay, he isn't. He's an eternal being, okay? He is the eternal being, okay? And 15 years walking with our Lord Jesus Christ, 15 years saved, it's nothing. It's nothing. Nothing at all. But see, brethren, the thing of it is, I have only been saved for 15 years. Only. I, I don't know as I ought to know. I have not perfect knowledge. But the one who lives within me, the Lord. This is what uh, John talks about. About the Lord God living in you will not lead you into sin. Okay? All right? He will not. But see, in walking with the Lord for 15 years, there have been things that the Lord has put me through, has allowed me to go through. Okay, we read in Hebrews chapter 5, okay, Hebrews, we're going we're gonna to get to first, uh, first Kings there, hold on. But in Hebrews chapter 5, Hebrews chapter 5, okay, Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 on to verse 14. For when the time, for when... For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them who are of full age, even those who by reason of use walking their talk, Putting the faith that we are given into practice, the scriptures that are pertinent for the dispensation into practice, okay? But strong meat belongeth to them who are a full age, that are, excuse me, a full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And you do that by the scriptures, Okay? I've only been saved for 15 years, and that's nothing. That's nothing. Okay? I'm learning new things of our Lord in the scriptures every day. Every day, something new that I have learned that I didn't know yesterday. The minute you stop learning of our Lord is the minute that you go up to heaven where you can be with him, and we would have all eternity. Okay? Amen, amen, amen. Okay? But here's the thing. Your servant. I, I haven't the experience of some, but the Lord has given your servant certain experiences and certain things because of putting into practice what is being told you. Okay? And um, also, too, in witnessing onto others, and this is something that I myself personally, and we're going to address this a little bit, about... Not, not talking down to somebody. Yeah. Okay? Not talking down to somebody. Okay? When it comes to those who are babes in Christ, I personally... Keep in mind not talking down to a younger brother or sister, okay? 
sometimes, I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm mindful of that because that's something I detest. I, and when you come across someone who does it to you, who talks down to you, especially when you've been out there a little bit longer, okay? Forgive me for speaking like this. Forgive me. Please forgive me. Okay? That, that ruffles some feathers. And you know what? Sometimes it's good to have your feathers ruffled. Amen, amen, amen. But you know, I personally, when witnessing and talking onto brethren, you know, there are some times when you've got to be stern with a brother or a sister, yes, but when it come, when it gets to the point where you're talking down to someone as if you're the inferior, I got to be on my guard against that myself. And when you encounter someone who does it to you, but, okay, but, all right, I, I want, we're going to touch on that a little bit more a little bit later, but I want to bring this up about 1 Kings chapter 19. Okay, and what's interesting about this in 1 Kings chapter 19, this is the after effect of where Elijah killed what? A whole bunch of false prophets who uh, jumped on the altar, cutting themselves with lances, going, oh, Baal, hear us, and nothing happened. Okay? And then Jezebel threatens Elijah, and then Elijah, ill-advised, it's like, oh, she's going to get me, and then bolts. Okay? And see, even 30 years ago, in my generation, heresy that was blatant, even people like uh, the Charismatics, 30 years ago, even 30 years ago, my generation, even 30 years ago, the Christians would have been, whoa, that's heresy. Whoa, that, what? But see what has happened. You have a lot of these fakes. And this has happened over centuries. Uh, Satan and his church, Roman Catholicism, have uh, weaseled their way in. you got to remember what the Jesuit order was there to do. To be the counter-reformation. To speak opposite of everything and to infiltrate. Okay? you got to remember that about the Jesuit order. Okay? And not everyone you are going to encounter is a Jesuit. No. Uh, there will be roots to Jesuitism, to Catholicism, um, whatever it is. Okay? All right? Um, I also find that the military is a strong link there, okay? But, okay, not everyone you are going to encounter is a Jesuit, okay? S somewhere or another you might find a link there, but that doesn't automatically prove that they're Jesuits. It doesn't. It doesn't. But after a while, you know, uh, there are some people out there that are so smooth that you can't. And, th and, these are, and these are the ones that you really got to watch out for. There are ones who are so smooth, so subtle, that you cannot directly pin them down. But rather, there are a bunch of little droppings that make up a hole. Okay? Those are the most dangerous. But 30 years ago, blatant heresy, even by some of these Christians would have been like, whoa, that, that's evil heresy. Watch out for that. That's dangerous, okay? But see, Christianity, because of the um, influence of the Jesuit order and the infiltration, has been so watered down. One second, please. <laughs> All right, sorry about that, brethren. Uh, they're doing stuff out here by us, and my alarm, Zena, was going crazy. So, anyway. 30 years ago, like, like we were saying, a blatant heresy would have been spotted by even a no nominal Christian. But today, heresy has been accepted. Okay? Why? Because the scriptures have been taken away. I mean, the scriptures are there, but the, most of the Christians, they don't read the scriptures. 
Most of the Christians don't rightly divide the word of truth. When you bring up rightly dividing the word of truth to these people, to the Christians, they look at you like you're a heretic. And then again, Satan, who is so clever, brings in people who claim to be dispensational. But then when you hear them talk, they're not dispensational at all. Okay? But what I'm getting at is, even 30 years ago, okay, my generation, I'm going to be 49 this year, okay? The Lord saved me 15 years ago, and that ain't nothing. But even 30 years ago, a lot of the blatant heresy that Christianity today is okay with, even 30 years ago, the Christians back then would have called out. But it ain't being called out today. It ain't. Because of the Jesuit order, because people don't want the truth, but want to have their ears tickled and itched. Okay? So in 1 Kings chapter 18, the blatancy of those prophets, which Elijah killed. Okay? But in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 9 on verse 12, check this out. And the thing about Satan also, you got to remember, is in Isaiah chapter 14, Satan said of himself, Lucifer, that he will be like the Most High. Remember to be anti is to not only to be against, but to replace. Okay? Satan is a counterfeit of everything. Alright? But he is also seeking to replace. Alright? Perfect example. God is one God that is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Of course, Satan is against that, and he wants to bring in onto you that God is three persons. And that's satanic nonsense. Okay? But don't worry. The satanic trinity will be on the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But that's just an example. But check this out. 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 9 and 12. And he came to, after he ran from Jezebel, okay, and this is Elijah, and he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And of course, Elijah stressed out and stuff like, like that said this. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, and the children of for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. Elijah was not the only one. Okay? He was not the only one. Okay? Uh, where uh, You look at verse 18. He says, Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto, ba unto Baal and every mouth which hath not kissed him. So Elijah was not the only one. But he, sometimes we do feel like we're the only ones, don't we, brethren? Yeah. Let's continue. Verse 11. And he said, Go forth, and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind rent the mountains, and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. So this big visible thing happened. It's like, wow! But the Lord was not in the wind. Hmm. So this big visible display of power. Yet the Lord was not in the wind. Does that break it? Hmm. And after the wind, an earthquake! Shaking, you know, shaking the things that those things that may be shaken. Um, what is it in Hebrews where uh, now I'll shake these things that the things that cannot be shaken may remain? Okay, all right. And after the wind and earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. So this big shaking, like I said, the tie-in with Hebrews, where they will shake things, where he will shake things, and the things that cannot be shaken will remain, but the things that are shaken will fall away. Yeah. Yeah. But the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. And 
after the earthquake, a fire. <laughs> and right away, think of the charismatics with that Holy Ghost fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. You know, two, two things here. For us of the Church of the Living God, sometimes we look for the Lord to do the grandiose answering our prayers, you know, the hallelujah, or stuff coming down with light beams like, ah, coming down, you know, right? When more often than not, it's that small stone past an avalanche. That still small voice. While well, Satan will use the big grandiose things too. But see, for us, the Church of the Living God, yes, the Lord can do these great things, but the point is here, number one, the Lord was the still small voice. And all these rocks were being rent and whatnot. Now the Lord can do that, yes. Like I said, 30 years ago, the heresy, the heresies that are being taught and accepted by Christianity today, even 30 years ago, would have been refuted. But see, the deception that is happening right now isn't coming necessarily also from wind-rending rocks or earthquakes that shake everything or even subtle fire, right? No. No. The deception, the most dangerous deception right now today are those who speak like a dragon, who have no temper, who have no fire in and of themselves and speak smoothly. Hmm? See, because the obvious, okay, even the obvious a lot of Christianity today has accepted, which you and I of the Church of the Living God are like, hey, 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 hey. But the totality of Christianity, that's why I'm not a Christian. Okay? You can say what you want. I'm not associated with that. Don't call me what the world called us. Okay? But a lot of what 30 years ago was blatant open heresy is readily accepted by Christianity today. And those who can see that are being deceived by these subtle people who come in without any reservation, who can't be pinned down specifically, but there's a little bit of droppings. Okay? These are the most dangerous. These are not the ones that are, we got to watch out for, brethren, in these last days. The ones we got to watch out for for the most are these who try to remember Satan is a counterfeit? Those who try to mimic as if they're speaking that soft, that what? That still small voice. That's why I don't, I have zero trust for anybody who doesn't, un, you know, it's not a good thing to always do, but, you know, if somebody doesn't every once in a while fly off the handle at least once, okay, uh, that, that, I don't trust a guy like that, okay? I don't trust anyone like that who doesn't every once in a while, uh, you know, get a little, you know, that, uh, get a little fire in them. I don't trust someone. I don't trust Smiley Dave. I don't trust that man at all. I have zero trust uh, for Smiley Dave, David Daniels, okay? I have no trust for that man, Okay? The only persons he gets angry with are those who are genuinely saved of the church of the living God. Okay, those are the only ones he gets truly, uh, shows a little fire with. Okay, all right. But like I said, brethren, we have to be aware of these things. Now, in Nehemiah chapter 6, go to Nehemiah. Go to Nehemiah chapter 6. Now, you got to remember, during the days of Ezra and Nehemiah, there were those who wanted to join themselves onto the Jews for the rebuilding of the temple and the rebuilding of the wall. And they said, you have no part with us, but we will do the work of our Lord. And what happens? 
those people who tried to join themselves on to the children of Israel to build with them, well, we worship the same God you do, okay? Uh, no, you don't. Go away. Get away from us, okay? But see, what has happened over the centuries with this satanic Christianity, the devil and his agents have so gotten in now, okay? And see, that's what it is. Satan and his ministers of righteousness have tried to be one with us. And as heresy is being accepted today by what is Christianity, okay, those who were never of us, those are the ones who are falling away. And those who are falling away can mess up saved brethren. Yes, they can. But see, saved brethren are saved brethren. But those who are falling away are those who tried to affix themselves, tried to join themselves. And over the centuries, so many people calling themselves Christians. But as time is going on and in heresy is being accepted, those of us who are of the church of the living God, it's like, wow, that guy, I thought he was saved. Wow, he really isn't. But yet, all these, all this time, he was right there saying that he was of us. Even sounded like he was one of us. Even sounded like he was one of us. Hmm. Yeah. But Nehemiah chapter 6, this is 1 on verse 7. Now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I built the wall and that there was no breach left therein, though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates, that Sanballat and Geshem sent on to me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. Let's talk about it. And yes, there's nothing wrong with brethren talking. But see, one of the tricks that these guys will use is like, let's, let's talk about it. And then it turns to where they are the ones being on the offensive. And you are like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I've, I've seen that before. I've been through that before. And when it, it's, re, you know, when you encounter it again, it's like, oh, dude, I can't believe I fell for that. Yeah, yes, but they sought mischief. And Nehemiah, something I myself should remember. <laughs> and I sent messengers unto them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? Yeah, you got to watch out with these people who want to talk with you, brethren. We are ambassadors for Christ? Yes, we are. But there are certain signs and signals that someone who is not of us will give you that you need to heed. Because if you allow it to continue, all that's going to happen is you're going to be the one to make it look bad. And that can happen to even, even the best of us who have been saved for years and years and years and years. Okay? Because, personally, I have a pride problem. And the enemy knows I have a pride problem. And one of the ways the enemy, through one of his ministers of righteousness, could personally get me is by going to that soft spot, knowing that uh, it's a daily struggle, but yet using subtlety to try to bring it out. My fault. It's my fault. My pride is my fault. It's my fault. No one else's. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 4. Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort, and I answered them after the same manner. Then sent Sanballat his servant unto me in like manner the fifth time with an open letter in his hand, five the number of death. And, and check it out. Now, they said previously, let's talk. Let's talk. Get together. Nehemiah's like, dude, I'm busy. Okay? I ain't got time. Sorry. Then what happens? Verse 6. 
wherein was written, it is reported among the heathen, and Gashmu saith it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel, for which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king, according to these words. And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah. It's like, we hear all these things about you. Oh, yeah. I, there's this one guy out in, out in England who tried this on me a while ago. A while ago, meaning a couple years ago. It's like, <laughs> dude, you know. Yeah, it's like, well, let's talk. No, you crazy. I ain't going to talk with you. <laughs> I wouldn't even give you the spit out of my mouth. <laughs> okay, I really wouldn't. Okay, but uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But see, well, I've heard this. These people are saying all this about. And see, ultimately, well, before they put off, we just want to talk. Ultimately, what they were going to do was to bring a railing accusation against them. Oh, yeah, boy. Very slick and smooth. Yeah. Yeah, you think so, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Verse 7 again. And thou, hath, and thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah. And now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. Threatening them. You can go ahead. You can say whatever you want to say. The truth will speak for itself. And those who stand for the truth eventually will be known. No matter how smooth you want to think you are. Second Timothy, Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two. Verses twenty-two on to verse twenty-six. Paul admonishes Timothy. Flee also youthful lusts. Youthful lust. Hold your place here. Here's a good example of what a youthful lust is. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses 9 on to verse 10. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. So, this tells us what? This tells us what? That a lot of youthful people, the kids, um, will follow their heart, okay? And a fool follows his heart. A fool says in his heart, there is no God, okay? So if you, you know, one of these guys who said, well, the Lord knows my heart, that's a statement of a lost man or woman, okay? That really is. Yeah, yes, the Lord does know your heart. That is desperately wicked and deceitful, yes. Yes, he sure does. So when you got someone saying, God knows my heart, watch out for someone like that. Okay? But see, young people, youthful people, they follow their heart and they go after their eyes. Just the sight of their eyes. And John warns us about that as well. Let's continue here. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy heart. Flash, for childhood and youth are vanity. And then Paul here, flee also youthful lusts. And in 1 John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2, one of the ways these slicker than snot devils can get you, okay? One of the ways is, verses 15 on to verse 17, by fleshly means. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 on to 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Okay? 
that's one of the ways because I, me personally, I have a pride problem. And uh, I will fight. I will fight. Unfortunately. I, <laughs> well, not if I, you know, we are to strive for the faith. Absolutely. That will be in the description box for you. But um, you push me hard enough, I will fight back with you. And therein is a problem that I have. Okay, uh, I'm not, a, you know, it's like, dude, what are you talking about? But see, that's why I like retrospect. Okay, that's why I like retrospect. Because afterwards, it's like, oh, I can't believe I fell for that. And it's all my fault. You know, someone, you know, like I said, I've only been walking with the Lord 15 years. That's it. But there are times when it's like when you know something is going on, but yet you still persist at it when you should have been like, well, okay, look, dude, I'm out of here. <laughs> See ya. Okay. Shame on me. Shame on me. Shame me once. Shame on you. Shame me twice. Shame on me. Okay. But youthful lusts. Fleshly, eye candy kind of thing. Prideful things. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, which is self-sacrifice, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Those who are of your own, church of the living God, fellow saints, but foolish, and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. Mm. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. Now, we are to strive for the faith. Yes. Yes, we are. We are to fight the good fight. But when it comes to uh, certain other things about, you know, for example, being gentle unto all men, being gentle does not mean withholding truth, okay? That does, that's not withholding truth, okay? You love someone by telling them the truth. You don't need to be a jerk about it, okay? Therein, the problem that some of us have, okay? You tell someone, it's like, dude, unless you, you need to repent of that, brother. You need to repent of that, sis sister. You're going for a cliff. Uh, you know, you don't withhold truth. You don't take truth either and jam it down their throat all at once. That's the gentleness that is being talked about there. Okay? I've made that mistake many a times before in the past where I've overloaded people and they get that look like Mark the Messenger and all his videos and his thumbnails where he's got that deer in the headlight looks like there's no one home behind the eyes. Okay? Uh, I have done that where I've taken the scriptures and overloaded them. That's the gentleness. Okay, that's the gentleness Paul is talking about. Not the gentleness that the Christians in the buildings tell you that you don't scare them by telling them truth. No, you scare the hell out of them. Amen, amen. Right? And if you say no to that, are you a fellow brother or sister? Hmm. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Someone who is taken captive at the will of Satan. Hmm. Safe people fall. False brethren fall away. Hmm. Safe people can be deceived, yes, and get in messed up, but... They, and they can uh, quench the spirit. They can sear their conscience, but they have the Lord in them. Sooner or later, the truth is going to deal with you if you don't deal with the truth. Okay? I've seen it in my own life with those who are in heaven now. Okay? All right? But we've got to remember this, brethren. That... One of the tactics of those who want to infiltrate will also do these things to you. Psalm 35. Psalm 35. 
Psalm 35. We want verses 11 on to 21. False witnesses did rise up. They lay to my charge things that I knew not. Remember, Satan is the accuser of the brethren. And when you are talk with someone who is doing nothing but accusing you, talking over you, talking down to you, Mm. Mm. But false witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned into mine own bosom. Hmm. Maybe because there is a point where someone has gone past the point of no return, where they cannot come back. The impossible is possible with God. But there are people today, I wholeheartedly, and I'm going to go on the record to say this, I do believe that there are damned people today. The impossible is possible with God, yes. But are you going to tell me that Arturo Sosa is going, the Lord is going to, the Lord could save him. But you look at what Arturo Sosa is doing and has done. Kenneth Copeland, you're going to tell me? Yeah, is that that man's not damned? Well, the Lord could say, you're right. You're right. It's possible, but not probable. And someone who willfully, actively going contrary to the scriptures, like Kenneth Copeland, like Arturo Sosa, the most powerful, dangerous man on earth today. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, okay? You go ahead and take that little thing and run with it as you want, okay? And you know, when you run into people, when you bring up Sosa as being damned, clever people know not to say, well, he's not damned. Oh, really? The general, the uh, superior general of the Jesuit order, Arturo Sosa, the most evil Dangerous, deadliest man on the face of this earth today. You're going to tell me that guy ain't damned. You're going to, come on, come on, come on, come on, let's hear it. Come on, make your little stupid video say, defending Arturo Sosa, that he's not damned. Bless his heart. Even my good boy from Canada. Uh, not the saved one. The saved one already takes uh, ta uh, takes on the Jesuit. The other one, yeah, good buddy. Even he would be like, wow, dude, you're going to defend Arturo Sosa. Even he would be like, yeah, you know, that would be a little too obvious, wouldn't it? For you to defend. Well, yeah, Arturo Sosa, he could still be saved. The impossible is possible with God. Yes, it is. But you're going to tell me? And then try to divert it. No, 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 no. No. Let's, let's go for the head of the snake. Try to tell me. Try to defend Arturo Sosa that he's not damned. Go ahead. And hey, if he can... Think about this. Think about this. Okay? Let's go with that. The impossible is possible with God. Okay? Possible, yes. Probable, no. Okay? Let's say Arturo Sosa, the head of the Jesuit order, truly did get saved. Kind of like Alberto Rivera. To my knowledge, there has never once been any, any superior gen general of the Jesuits to genuinely be saved. And you read the uh, extreme oath of the Jesuits. You read... Uh, uh, Brother Alberto Rivera's testimony of the Jesuits. You're going to tell me? You're going to tell me that Arturo's? No, that man's damned. Uh, impossible is possible with God, yes. But Arturo Sosa? Come on. Def go ahead and defend Arturo Sosa. <laughs> uh, yeah, even my good friend from England 
would have to because she's got to keep up the appearance. If someone were to come out to defend Arturo Sosa, uh, that oh, he could still be saved. He's just messed up. Even he would be. Even he would be like, uh, wow, dude. I, not even I would do that, you know. <laughs> but okay, sorry for that little rabbit trail. Okay, sorry for that little rabbit trail. Let's continue. Okay, verse fourteen. I behaved myself as though he had been my friend or brother. I bowed down heavily as one that mourneth for his mon his mother. There have been people that my wife and I both have prayed earnestly for, who have cried for, who turned out to be false brethren. Our prayer returned into our own bosom. Okay? There, there are some people that we know of who we prayed for earnestly. Um, someone who had claimed to have a heart attack uh, as well like I have. And never went to a doctor or anything. And we prayed and wept for them. And they, they turned out to be you know, coadjutors themselves. Just, oh, wow. Okay, wasted tears, if you will. Okay. Verse 15. But in mine adversity, they rejoiced. And gathered themselves together. Yea, the abjects gathered themselves together against me. And I knew it not. They did tear me with tear they did tear me and ceased. With hypocritical mockers and feasts, they gnashed upon me with their teeth. Hold your place here and go to Romans chapter one. Romans chapter one. Romans chapter one. Verses twenty eight on to verse thirty two. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Now, the reprobate doctrine stems from Calvin, elect and non-elect. The new IFB, they came out with the reprobate saying that if someone was a sodomite, they couldn't be saved. Okay? No. Yes, anyone. The impossible is possible with God. But there are people who have gone past the point of no return who will not be saved. Okay? Again, come on. Try to defend Arturo Sosa. You know better than that. <laughs> and if you don't, hey, my friend from England, have fun attacking them. Okay? Oh, my good, my good friend from Canada, not the saved brother, but my good friend from Canada, hey, good, go at them. They come out saying they're the Church of the Living God and then try to uh, defend Arturo Sosa, the head of the Jesuits. Go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go at them. But let's continue, okay? And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, envy, full of envy, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, departing from evil, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Misery loves company. Let's continue now in uh, Psalm 35. Verse 17, picking up it. Lord, how long wilt thou look on? Rescue my soul from their destructions, my darling from the lions. And remember, Satan as of a roaring lion, as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Okay? <clears throat> I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people. 
Let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without cause. Verse 20. For they speak, for they speak not peace. Hmm. But they devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. Kind of like what we looked at in Nehemiah. They didn't seek peace. The whole purpose is to point out the faults and flaws in everybody else. You ever run into someone like that? I know of a Canadian guy, not a saved one, but uh, a Canadian guy who his entire thing was verse 21. Yea, they opened their mouth wide against me and said, aha, aha. <laughs> <laughs> aha, aha, or I have seen it. Troublemakers. Always looking for something to hang you on. It's a troublemaker. They seek not peace. I know of a Canadian guy, that's all he was about. Okay? That's all he was about. Looking, it's like, Okay. Oh, no, pass that one. Oh, but, aha! He's, he's wrong in that. Oh, he's lost. Aha! Uh -huh. Or they meticulously try to attack every single word that you use. Mm. Well, you just said. You just said. And see, they go at you through, the, through your pride. Someone who should have known better. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to watch out for these people, brethren, who are always, oh, just, you know, if, you know, it's one thing for brethren to talk. It's like, I have talked to people who the Lord had me to correct. Um, and it was always in love. Okay, there came times where things got a little heated, but we weren't trying to talk over each other, and one wasn't talking down to somebody or talking at them. <laughs> okay? You know... Even even out of courtesy to someone who is older than me in longevity of fleshly years, I'm not going to talk down to them, even if I have been with our Lord longer, say, than they have. Okay? Out of courtesy, I'm not going to talk down to them. And if I do, hey, bring me to account. Okay? i got to watch that. But when you run into someone who's going to talk down to you like that, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yes, verse 21, the aha people, aha people, like the Canadian guy who I keep referencing, I'm not going to give you his name, don't need to, okay, he stays in the shadow, and you know what, for that guy, if he ever watches this, he might, I got to thank you for taking that one guy uh, away. Uh, thank you. It turned out to be crazy, and uh, maybe you haven't found out yet yourself. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. But these are the people who are always on the lookout to, no matter what, always, I mean, and yes, we are to be scrutinized, yes, but see, these people are doing it to find any kind of dirt on you whatsoever so they can attack you and turn people against you. That's Jesuit. That's what a Jesuit does. That's what a Jesuit does. First Timothy chapter 5. And about that? See, it takes time. Granted, it, does, uh, it doesn't take like centuries or decades. It all depends. But it takes time to judge fruits. I mean, there are some for us of the Church of the Living God where we see certain things or certain people. It's like, <laughs> it's like okay, get away. But it also takes time to watch a person, to hear a person, to compare scripture with scripture, okay? Okay, it does take time, okay? 
And with that, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 24 and 25. Some men's sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment, and some men they follow after. They're really smooth. Sooner or later, that smooth is going to run thin. Sooner or later, even the very best can't go that long without shooting themselves in the foot. Verse 25. Likewise, also, the good works of some are manifest beforehand, and they that are otherwise cannot be hid. Hmm. Absolutely. Now go to Proverbs, uh, Psalm 56. Psalm 56. Psalm 56. Let's look at another thing. That's what some of these people will do. Psalm 56, verses 1 out of verse 6. Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up. For they be many that fight against me, O thou most high. Oh yeah, there are many that fight against us, brethren. Yep. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Amen, brother, sister. In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Verse 5. Every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me. For evil. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps when they wait for my soul. Yeah, look at, aha, aha. And then they scrutinize ridiculously. Well, you just said, you just said, you just said this, you just said that. That's, aha, aha. Hmm. Is that how brethren are supposed to behave? Hmm. And afterward, I mean, you make the stupid decision and fight fire with fire? But see, afterward, the Lord breaks you and humbles you. I should have never done it. I, I should have never uh, I should never fight fire with fire myself. I talked to you about fighting fire with fire because what happens when you fight fire with fire? Fire wins. And we mustn't strive. We mustn't unneedlessly strive, I should say, because we are to strive for the faith. The link for your questions about that, look in the description box, okay? Defend yourself if you're attacked. But if someone smacks you, don't automatically smack them back. Okay? All right? If someone smacks you, fleshly, you smack me, it's like, I'm going to smack you back. But see, you smack me, it's like... <sighs> back off. But if your life is in danger, it's like, okay, you're going to kill me? Like if my good friend from England ever showed up, it's like no, there's only one reason why he would be here. It's like, okay, let's go. One of us is going to go. I don't think it's going to be me. <laughs> Hope not, but even so, um, because a devil take your life, right? Besides, I got a wife to, con uh, to worry about. But anyway, even so, I know where I'm going to go. Why do you think some of these devils are so ferocious in their attacks? Because they know where they're going. They don't want to go there. But they want to bring you there too, brother, sister. But yeah, they they one of the things that these people will do is like, well, you just said. You just said. That, that this is what, you know, this is this is tactics that the, you know, like the, the guy from New York, uh, the Inquisitor, they 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 do this kind of thing. Okay, and then they they're very clever, and then they try try to twist it, and then say you're doing it. These these people, brethren, these people in these last days, these deceivers, 
are so subtle. You got to watch out. Okay? Because we were warned about it. But see, also, go to Proverbs 26, the fool's proverb. Okay? Proverbs 26, verses 20 on to verse 26. Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceaseth. And what way is that? What better way to keep wood on a fire than looking for a... Aha! Aha! You, well, you just said. You just said. You just said. You just... Shut up! Go away! That's a tail, a tail bearer, a liar. But see, excuse me. A tail bearer. And see... These heretics, they would do that. He just said. That's Jesuit. Not everyone you are going to encounter is a Jesuit. No. No. Some of them aren't that good to be Jesuits, apparently. But that Jesuitism, we encounter it daily, brethren. The words of a tail bearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Burning lips and a wicked heart are like a pot shared cover with silvered dross. Like uh, putting a dress on a pig, a way to put it. He that hateth dissembleth with his lips, and layeth up deceit within him. Verse 25. When he speaketh fair, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart. <laughs> Verse 26, whose hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness shall be shewed before the whole congregation. Smile at you. Well, they pisseth on your foot. Embrace you in a hug, but take the poniard and stabbing you in the back and giving you a kiss. I love you, brother. <laughs> yeah. 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 Paul warned us. Paul warned us in Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. <laughs> you know, th thank you to those of you who subscribe to this Little Nothing channel that has been shadow banned and that YouTube just loves to attack. <laughs> Remove comments, likes, views, Shadow ban, you know, that's happened, okay? But uh, if the Lord keeps it at, you know, whatever, this is of the Lord. This is of the Lord. This is not of me. I don't want to be, I don't want this thing that the Lord is having me to do become this great big thing here on YouTube. I no, I don't want to be in the limelight. It's not about me. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ, about his word, the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? Acts 20, verses 28 on to verse 31. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the Christians. Keeping you on your toes, yes. To feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Kind of like what they did in uh, uh, Ezra and Nehemiah. We build, we want to build with you. They want to join themselves. And over the centuries within this Christendom, Satan and his ministers have joined themselves, or tried to affix themselves, okay? They are the ones that are falling away over time the ones who are not truly saved. Okay? <clears throat> All
also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things. Why? To draw away disciples after them. Yeah, yeah. We'll read a little bit more into that here in a little bit. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. Just two verses. Romans, not Galatians, Brad. Romans chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. <laughs> and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts. Second Timothy chapter three. Second Timothy chapter three. Verses one on verse thirteen. This know also that in the last days which we are in, or is that written for another dispensation? <clears throat> this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, hmm. <laughs> having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep in the houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Oh boy, I've seen that one before. Yeah. Always learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Hmm. Now as Janais and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifested, manifest, excuse me, unto all men, as theirs also was. And of course, 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, uh, verse 19, they went out from us, but they were not of us. Yeah. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. That seal until the day of redemption, the Lord. Okay? Which we have of the Church of the Living God. We who are saints. Those who over the centuries in Christianity have tried to align themselves with us. Okay, let's continue. Verse 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine. Hmm. Manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. Yes, Paul was our example of how to walk according to the scriptures today doctrinally for us in this dispensation. He was our example for this dispensation to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Greek is Gentile, okay? Paul is our example. Yes, he was the apostle on to the, to the Gentiles while Peter was on to uh, the apostle on to the circumcision, the Jews, the Hebraic people, yes. But it was Paul on to whom the doctrine for today was given on to. More on that in a bit. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, 
afflictions which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. And, uh, and of course, um, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 5. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Well, that says latter times. That says latter days. <gasps> yeah, hath God said, huh, buddy? Yeah. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Right away we think of Catholicism, Catholic, but a lot of the Hindus, uh, the Islamic people, okay, they had this problem with pork, okay? It's not just Catholicism. But it is Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, abominations of the earth. And Mystery Babylon today is Roman Catholicism. Okay, But this, verse 3, is not just. Even though Catholicism is obvious, you have Islam. You have Hinduism. You have, what, um, um, what is that? Men go their own way thing. Okay? Extreme veganism. If two vegans have a problem with each other, is that still considered beef? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was a vegan once myself. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Jesting. Excuse me. I'm sorry. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. Yes, you can eat pork today. But the main reason we looked at this is the doctrines of devils. Doctrines of devils. Um, a few years ago, I think, maybe two years ago, maybe three, easy believism, easy believism, specifically attacked Romans chapter 10. Okay? Uh, the easy believism heretic says in order to be saved, you just simply have to believe. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. And these, some of these guys would were going and saying that, number one, Calling on the name of the Lord is a work. They said that prayer is a work. And people who talk about scriptural repentance and, you know, praying and calling upon the name of the Lord, they say the phrase, you're backloading works into salvation. Okay. This was a thing maybe two years ago, maybe three. Okay. Maybe. But see, one of the things that they did. Okay. One of the things that they did was they attacked Romans chapter 10. Okay? Romans, go to Romans chapter 10. Okay? They attacked verses 9 and 10 in Romans chapter 10. But what saith, uh, excuse me, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, and to see these clever devils came up with a, well, what, what if they can't speak? Huh? 
They, they came up with ridiculous arguments like that. But see, what they were doing is they were trying to defend their heresy of just believe. And also what they did, they say that repentance is going from unbelief to belief. <laughs> That's what they call repentance. The repentance for us today, yes, you are turning from something. Yes, you are. Thou believest there is one God, you, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. The repentance that you are, what you are doing, what you are repenting of is your self-righteousness. Okay? That you are a good person. That you don't deserve to go to hell. That you're all, we're all sinners, but you are not as bad as so as so. Okay? That's what you are repenting of. Okay? But see, the easy believism heretic came along and said that repentance is a work. It's actually going from unbelief to belief. And they said that calling on the name of the Lord was a work. But you have this right here. In the Pauline epistles, specific doctrine for us today. In the Pauline epistles. But you know what they did? to defend this, to defend their heresy, they would say that in within the book of Romans, that Romans 9, 10 and 11, Paul was writing on to the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. And you know what they would do? You know what they would do to, to try to prove this to you? They would go to... Joel, Joel chapter 2, okay? Joel chapter 2, and you know what they would do? They would go, uh, that, that, that one excellent guy from England even did this. Uh, Joel chapter 2, verse 32, they would come here, and they would say, and it shall come to pass in Joel chapter 2, verse 32, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. And then they would go to that, and then they would say, so see, there's an Old Testament connotation. And then they would go to Romans chapter 9, uh, verses 1 on to verse 5, and say, so see, Paul is, that is clearly written for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. That's heresy. And see, they did that in order to defend their heretical just belief. Because the easy believism heretic will go to Romans chapter 3 and skip over Romans 3, 10 and 18. Which is breaking you. Which shows you you're not a good person. Specifically. Romans 1 and 2, absolutely. But when you get to Romans 3, especially 1 on to verse 18... That's, you know, the nail in the coffin. The Lord is pleading with you as a lawyer, showing you your guilt in Romans 1, 2, and 3. And in Romans 3, after 18, here's the answer to your problem. Okay? But see, the easy believism heretic skips over that and goes right to belief. And then calls, calling upon the name of the Lord, a work when Paul, wrote it specifically for us today as well in this dispensation. Yeah. So these easy believism heretic devils, they said that Paul, the epistles that are attributed to Paul himself, we don't, I don't know about Hebrews, my, we can't see, and that's uh, in most of the scriptures, it's attributed, the book of Hebrews is attributed to Paul, right? Now, whether or not you believe Paul was the author of Hebrews, who ultimately is the author of Hebrews? The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? Personally, I do not believe that Paul was the author of the book of Hebrews, okay? I don't. Uh, the books that are attributed to Paul, like from Romans onto Philemon, Obviously, Paul had a literal thing to do with them. 
I don't believe so with Hebrews. Uh, whoever wrote Hebrews, I don't believe it was Paul, obviously was influenced by Paul, yes, but I do not believe it was Paul himself at all. Now, see, one of these heretics, in order to defend their heresy, would go, oh, I'll prove to you that Paul wrote it. Uh, the Pauline epistles, um, Paul identifies himself in some shape or form, okay? Where there's no question. We don't know about Hebrews, okay? And like I said, I'm not going to get into a contention about that, okay? All right? That who ultimately is the author of Hebrews? Our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? And see, that's a distracting argument to bring up, to distract you with someone to be like, aha, 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 well, you said this, you said this. Yeah. But see, that's what the easy believers some heretic did with Romans chapter 10. They say, to this day, that Romans 9, 10, and 11 are doctrinally for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. That's heresy. That's wicked, deadly heresy. And you know another thing that they did? They go to uh, verse 14, and they say, these guys, they never deal with verse 14. Oh, like a certain verse 13 when someone is trying to do the same thing with another book attributed unto Paul. Mm. But the, the easy believism heretic was like about verse 14. They never, they never deal with verse 14. They said the evil, the evil easy believism heretic said they'll read from verse 1 on verse 13 in Romans 10, but they don't deal with verse 14. Why do they say that? Verse 14 in Romans 10. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And see, what the easy believers and heretic devil did, they focused on believed in that verse. Oh, boy. And see, that's a tactic of devils. They'll focus on, well, you just said this. You just said that. You just, a minute ago, you said this trying to trip you up and I know that and I recognize that and I didn't cut it off shame on me shame on me but the easy believe is some heretic they focused on believe and then they said well see it's just believe because that verse says believe they focused on the one word. But what is being said in that verse? How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? See, it's just believe. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher, you idiots? Verse 14 is talking about those who are called to go out and preach. We're all... In the ministry of reconciliation, yes. But not everyone is called to preach. Not everyone is called to teach. We are called to live as an example, yes. But there are different functions within the body of Christ. We have long proved that in many videos before. Okay? Uh, verse 14 is talking about, and thereon, uh, so verse 17, so faith cometh by... And how shall they preach except they be sent? The, the Greek, which Greek? Apostolos sent one. Okay? Sent. Called, you know, to go preach. Okay? Not everybody's called to preach. We're called to be witnesses, ambassadors, yeah. Yes, but not everybody's called to... Come on! Even you devils, come on! Okay? But see, like I said... Easy believism heretic Tell, wants you to believe that Romans 9, 10, and 11 is doctrinally for the time of Jacob's trouble. Hmm. Even a proud, arrogant little jerk knew that was wrong, that that was evil. 
which the heretics, the easy believism heretics were doing. And, and also, too, the easy believism heretic would about their go to was the Philippian jailer. You know, believe, just believe. And then we of the Church of the Living God, uh, he had godly sorrow. What does the easy believism heretic do? No, he had worldly sorrow. He didn't have godly sorrow. Uh, godly sorrow, okay, what is that? Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 20, uh, what is that? Um, what is that? Is that 7? Uh, or is that, uh, where, where is that? Where is that? One second. Hey, it is. Verse 10, uh, verse 10 in uh, 2 Corinthians 7. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation not to be repented of. Okay? It's a two-edged sword. The easy believism heretic wants you to believe that it's a straight-edged razor. It's a two-edged sword. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. If the Philippian jailer had worldly sorrow, dear friend, he would have committed Harry Krishna. Okay? The Philippian jailer had godly sorrow. But see, the easy believism heretic says that he had worldly sorrow. He didn't. He had godly sorrow. Why do they do this? Why do they do this? Why do they go through all of this? Two reasons. To defend themselves, to infiltrate, and also to try to use it to attack those of the church of the living God. Hmm. You don't think I caught that, did you? No, you didn't. To defend themselves. Well, brother so-and-so, he's, he's, he's teaching contrary to, he's leading people astray. But yet, he's saved because he just believes. Right? And hey, I'm saved because I just believe. So see, they do this for two reasons, to defend themselves. Hey, I seek your Lord like you do. And also to attack. Brother so-and-so, yeah, I believe, he's, he just believed. These people, the easy believism heretics, want you to believe that Shimon in Acts chapter 8 was a saved man because he just believed. When Peter is like, your money perished with thee. Okay, he wasn't right with God. Okay, he wanted them to pray for him instead of him going to the Lord himself. Okay, Shimon the sorcerer in Acts chapter 8, he was never a saved man. But see, the easy believism heretic, hey, he just believes he was just messed up. See, to defend other infiltrators, but also to attack. Oh yeah, uh, brother so-and-so, oh, I believe he's, he's a saved man because he just believes, but he's teaching heresy. He's teaching contrary to the scriptures. He's speaking anti-Christ. You smooth boy. Twofold, to defend and to attack. That's why they do it. And that's how they're going to do it. And saying, breaking up that in Romans chapters 9, 10, and 11 are doctrinally for the time of Jacob's trouble. Brethren, sisters, church of the living God called to be saints, if someone comes out telling you that something that is written in the Pauline epistles is doctrinally instead for the time of Jacob's trouble, they are lying to you. Okay? They are seeking to defend their own heresy and doing that to attack those of the church of the living God. Stay away from someone like that. Stay away. I'm warning you. Dear brethren, someone who claims to be of us, who's going to come to you and say, well, something like the, the example of the easy believers and devil. Well, actually, Romans 9, 10, and 11 doctrinally are for the time of Jacob's trouble. Well, that's not the same thing as in another book. You're doing the same thing that they did. And 
doctrine that Paul wrote in the Pauline epistles is doctrine for us today. I will prove that to you. Not I, the scriptures. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 on verse 7. Yeah, I got a little fire, don't I? For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. He just said, he just, shut up. The Lord rebuke you. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words. What is this mystery? Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages, other dispensations, was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. See, these easy believism heretics claim to be dispensational, but what did they tell you? That it's by faith alone from Genesis unto Revelation. While they claim to be dispensational, in the dispensa salvation changes in the dispensations. That's what makes them different. But see, the easy believism heretic, to defend their just believe doctrine, it's just believe from Genesis, faith alone, from Genesis unto Revelation. When you read the account of the first dispensation, the Garden of Eden, it was all works. It, that there proves them wrong. Okay? But continuing. Uh, verse 5 again. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And of course you read Acts chapter 15, the Jerusalem conference. Uh, okay, after that, they were all coming out preaching what Paul was preaching. Why? Why? Oh, let's go to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 on to verse 12. The gospel that we are preaching today, dear brethren, was given on to Paul. So the Pauline epistles doctrinally are for us today. All of them. All of it. Okay? The book of Hebrews is written on to the Hebrews. And you read that clearly. I think that's Hebrews chapter 4 or something where it talks about how they can lose their salvation and not get it back. Okay? All right? I do not believe Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. But who ultimately is the author of Hebrews? God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, uh, the Spirit of Truth. The Lord is that Spirit. You know, the Holy Ghost. One God. Okay? He is the author of the authorized version. Okay? But Galatians, and I'm not getting into, you want to argue me about Hebrews? Uh, you're, that's a distracting argument. Okay? Who ultimately is the author of Scripture? Yeah. Galatians 1, 6 on the verse 12. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which ye which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Yeah. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but 
by the revelation of Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 4 on to verse 13. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 4 on to verse 13. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that may that he may please him please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a, and if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. No shortcuts. Takes time. Okay? The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Uh, we just looked at Paul what didn't come up with this out of his own head. Okay? He calls it my gospel there, yes. But we just looked at he didn't come up with it by himself. It was revealed unto him by the Lord Jesus Christ. Hold your place here. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Okay? <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 and verse 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That he received. Back to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Okay? Picking up at verse 9. Wherein I suffer trouble, as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Amen. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they may also obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Excuse me. It is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Dead to the world. Okay? If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Um, that's not talking about salvation. You can deny the Lord. And you can put the scriptures on the uh, shelf and deny him. Okay? Yes, you can. But see, you have the Lord within you. Okay? You're once saved, always saved, eternally secure. Okay? You can't get rid of the Lord if you're truly saved. But if you deny him in other ways, he can deny you peace, grace, mercy, provision. Oh, oh, a whole bunch of things he can deny you. But he won't deny you your salvation. Or else he's a liar. Hmm. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. In Jeremiah chapter 22, in Jeremiah chapter 22, uh, 23, excuse me, Jeremiah chapter 23, we see this warning about false prophets that in all these false prophets, you can plainly see this. Uh, Jeremiah 23, 21, and 22. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. They want to be in the, in the limelight. They want to run to the front. They want everyone to look at them. They want to be well known. They run. They want hundreds of thousands of subscribers. They want to be popular. They want everyone to like their stuff. I don't want to be popular. I've said this before. I don't want thousands of subscribers. I, I, I don't want that. Keep me shadow banned. Okay, please, you two. Keep me shadow banned as you have. Please. Okay? Keep me small. Keep it, yeah, me. I, he must increase. I must decrease. This is not about me. Okay? Keep it small. 
Verse 22. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. False prophets want to be popular. They run to the forefront. First Timothy chapter 3. First Timothy chapter 3. We're almost done. We're almost done. First Timothy chapter 3. Verses 3 on to verse 7. They've run to the front and they want to be a somebody. I'm accepted in the beloved. <laughs> First Timothy chapter 1 verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. I'm accepted in the beloved. That's good enough for me. I don't want to be anyone big. I don't, I don't want that. I want my Lord to be glorified. And I want you to be edified. That's what it's about. Serving others. Called to preach? First Timothy chapter three, uh, first Timothy chapter one, verses three and verse seven. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith so do. Now the end of the commandment is charity, self-sacrifice, out of a pure heart, and of a good conscience, and of faith unfeigned, from which some, having swerved, have turned aside unto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say, nor whereof they affirm. In Titus chapter 1, Titus chapter 1, verses 10 on to verse 16. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Circumcision, those who preach the law, okay? Whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. One of them, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. Oh, a kindred being marked out as a specific thing as being evil beasts and slow bellies? Oh, boy. I guess Paul, Paul was racist, wasn't he? This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables, and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but their mind and conscience is defiled. They professed, they professed that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. I, I do this, I do that, I do this, I do many good works. Does the Lord know you? Huh? Does the Lord know you? The Lord knows everybody. He knows of people. But does he know you by having a living relationship with the living God? Brethren, Please be cautious. People who come out and tell you that within the Pauline epistles, that Paul, specifically within the Pauline epistles, was writing for another dispensation within, like the book of Romans, 
That's what the easy believism heretics did. They did that to defend their heresy, to deceive the simple, and also to defend themselves and other infiltrators and to attack the church of the living God. When you got someone who's going to come out saying that, get away from them. Because there's only two options. They are actually only, they are, they may be actually saved and messed up. And if that be the case, the Lord rebuke them, correct them and get them right on track. Or they're an infiltrator. There's only two options. And like it said in 2 Timothy, uh, where is that? In 1 Timothy chapter 5. I took off my glasses. <laughs> in 1 Timothy chapter 5. Excuse me, I'm going to have to squint. That's when it takes a little time to watch. Some men, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 24 and 25 again. Some men's sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment, and some men they follow after. Likewise, also the good works of some are manifest beforehand, and they that are otherwise cannot be hid. Okay? Did you read the proverb for today? I wrote this down and I didn't address it, but now, Proverbs 10. Today is the 10th. Proverbs 10, verses 18 on to verse 21. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool, who says in his heart there is no God. In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. Wis wise, accounted for wisdom, the fear of the Lord. And in Ecclesiastes, it talks about how a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. What is that in Ecclesiastes 5? Hold, oh, hold your place here. Ecclesiastes 5, okay, and look at that, okay? You see in verse 18, a fool who says in his heart there is no God, but someone who refraineth his lips is wise, wisdom attributed on, wise, wisdom attributed unto the fear of the Lord. Okay? The tongue of the just is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. And Ecclesiastes 5... Ecclesiastes 5. <laughs> now, context, this is talking about vows and going on to a temple. And we do not have temples today. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Uh, but verse 3. For a dream cometh through multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. <laughs> and verse 7. For in the multitude of dreams and many words there are also divers vanities. But fear thou God. That's going to be it for this video, brethren. Please be cautious, brethren. We are in the last days. The redemption of the purchased possession could happen at any moment. And the deception, evil is good and good is evil now. What was 30 years ago blatantly obvious heresy is now accepted by Christianity. This is why I'm not a Christian, and why I want nothing to do with Christianity. And the deception is at the point where Satan doesn't need to have these thunderbolts and lightning. But the more successful devils that will be around are the smooth talkers. Especially in these last days. And those of us of the Church of the Living God, we also, who have walked with our Lord for a while, hi, we've got to remember this as well. Ecclesiastes 10, verses 1 and verse 3. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. So doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. Yeah, when you fight fire with fire. 
A wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart at his left. Okay? Christ on the right hand of God. Okay? It's not a dig against left-handed people. Okay? Yea, also, when he that is a fool who saith in his heart there is no God, walketh by the way, Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. His wisdom faileth him. And he saith to everyone that he is a fool. So when someone who is an infiltrator preaching the fear of the Lord, but is actually a fool, yeah, when he tries to walk by the way, his own wisdom, not the Lord's, faileth him. Be cautious, brethren. Be cautious. Be very cautious. So, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for those of you who pray for us, who love us and help us. We pray and love so many of you as well. Um, thank you. Take heed to this warning, brethren. We love you. We'll see you in the next video.